Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a Sunday Reads video because I had a bunch of disparate things I wanted to talk about today and I thought I would just kind of use the Sunday Reads or the Friday Reads or whatever format to fit in all the little different odds and ends that I wanted to talk about. So the very first thing that I wanted to say is thank you to all of my new subscribers. I recently, over the past week, hit 1,000 subscribers and that is a huge milestone for me. Um, I did not really have a set goal in mind when I started the channel. I just simply wanted to participate in booktube and make videos and talk to people about books um, because I don't have a lot of that in my real life. So anybody that sort of subscribed to my channel and engaged with me in talking about books was a win for me. But to reach this milestone of a thousand subscribers is a big deal and I wanted to you know, commemorate it on this channel as it were and um, just say a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed and who watch my content and who have talked to me in the comments down below. I've made some wonderful friends through this medium. Um, I just can't believe how awesome it is to have made friends across the globe who I can talk to about books and other things and it's simply wonderful and has enhanced my life tremendously. So thank you to all. I don't know for sure what I will do um, to sort of mark this um, accomplishment, but I'm thinking about doing, um, taking the uh, My Neck of the Woods tag and sort of doing that in terms of letting you know a little bit more about where I live and main authors that I love. So I'm planning to do some kind of a video in that vein as a way to mark this uh, milestone reached. And uh, hopefully that would be something that you would enjoy. If you have any other suggestions for things that you'd like to see me do now that I've reached this milestone, note it down in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. The second thing I wanted to um, talk about is this book, uh, Women Talking by Miriam Taves. This is a uh, book that is not out yet in the United States. It's been released in Europe and I purchased it through Book Depository. Um, it doesn't come out in the United States until April 2019. I had heard both Sean the Book Maniac and Britta Bowler um, talk about this book and it sounded amazing and Sean particularly recommended it to me. Um, so this is a, a novel that's based on a real-life event. It's a fictionalized version of a real-life event um, where a Mennonite colony in Bolivia um, turns out a group of men, seven or eight men, was using an animal tranquilizer to knock women out in the middle of the night and then um, sexually assault and rape them. And so Miriam Taves takes that um, true event and imagines how the women might have reacted to that um, horrible, horrible um, happening. So this, the abuses took place over years. The women were um, initially uh, not believed by their community. They were told that they were being hysterical. They were told that they were, um, it was a fantasy, that none of it had happened. Um, but eventually uh, a, a woman isn't completely knocked out and is awake and captures and screams and you know uh, they, ca they catch some men in the act of doing these horrible things and then those men rat out basically <laughs> the rest of the men that are involved. Um, this book was amazing. I'm just gonna say right off the bat, this is a five-star read for me. I loved this book. It is a difficult book at times. It talks about some pretty horrible things. It's, um, it's it, in a couple of spots, I was actually shocked by the graphic and matter-of-fact way some of the abuses were talked about because the women that were abused ranged from very young children all the way up to very elderly women. So that's pretty horrifying and, and uh, impactful to read about. But this book also made me laugh, it brought me to tears, it made me angry, it made me thoughtful, like just the whole range of emotions in one slim novel. This is about 225 page novel. Um, it 
is a realistic, I think, look at what women, how women might react to such, a group of women might react to such a horrible thing. The Mennonite women in this colony are, are completely subjected to um, male domination. They're not allowed to be educated. They don't know how to read and write. They don't um, have any uh, power in their community other than they manage the food, basically, and they manage the children, they manage the running of the household. So they have power in that way that women throughout time have had power, but they don't have any overt power. Um, but they have, the women in this book have agency, they come together and while they don't all agree with one another, they work together to solve their problems. Um, I want to say also before I get too much further into my thoughts about this book that the format of this book is set up in a unique way and that the narrator of the story is, um, I believe his name is Augustus or August, I can't remember if it's Augustus or August, August, is a man and he um, he's an outsider in their community and as such he is asked, he's the teacher, he's asked by the women to record the minutes of their conversations as they try to decide what to do in the period of time where the men who were um, the men who were assaulting the women have been taken uh, off, out of the community and out into the, uh, been arrested by the police and the rest of the men have gone to the city to try to procure their release through bail. Um, and August is left behind because he's not really considered a man. He's, um, he's the teacher and he's, because of past events, he is not considered one of the men. So the women ask him to take their notes because he can read and write and sort of be witness to their discussions as they plan what to do um, before the men come back. So the whole book takes place over like two days, two or three days, um, two days I think. And that structure was really interesting. I really wondered at the choice of the women to have this man be present while they discuss what to do, but that becomes very clear at the end why. Um, why that happened and I thought that was a great uh, it was sort of a great circling around um, for all the themes that this book is trying to hit so very well done that way I also want to contrast this book with a book that I read earlier um, in the year uh, uh, the Charlotte Wood the natural way of things which I hated because I felt that the way that the group of women that were portrayed in that book um, were not portrayed realistically. I didn't think women would react in the way that those women reacted. I hated the, um, the, you know, the uh, prolonging of the horrible metaphor that women can't get along, and even in order to save their own lives or in order to escape a um, a very violent and dangerous situation, women couldn't work together um, for that length of time in order to get their, get themselves to safety. I didn't buy that. Um, they didn't have the women in the natural way of things I, I thought didn't, didn't react um, in a way that made sense to me. Whereas the women in this book absolutely acted in a way that made sense to me. They really, throughout the course of these two days as they talk, address such address issues of faith of motherhood of of family of uh, marriage and partnership of of freedom of independence of agency of you know are you a, a human or an animal when you're subjugated the way these w women have been subjugated it just it touches on everything in that a woman might experience in a patriarchal society um, and it takes this microcosm of a Mennonite community and and it really does apply to the broader world um, not in the specifics necessarily but in the themes and in the things that you might experience as a woman in the world today one thing that this book made me um, remember and think about was an incident that happened to me early on in my career where I was um, the only woman at a meeting 
uh, where we were discussing, you know, I, like I said, I work in the science field. We were discussing an issue of um, pertinent to uh, water levels in a river and controlling those water levels in the river. And we, you know, there's a table, everybody's sitting around the table and there's probably 10 other people beside myself, all men, all older men. Um, I was at the time in my mid twenties and so the the meeting had been going on for quite some time i had been completely silent i finally you know i had a point to make i i interjected i made my point the men all sort of looked at me nobody responded in any way and they continued to talk as if i had never spoken and it was really the first time that i remember in my professional life being like I, I might as well not even be here. I might as well be the chair, you know, as a, a living, breathing person for all of the notice that these men give me and my supposed, you know, knowledge and uh, professional recommendations for this particular issue. And I just, it just brought that incident to mind for me reading this book about how so often women are sidelined or not listened to or you know given any agency to act um, their ideas aren't taken seriously all of that stuff that we experience as a woman in the world um, and this book makes you think about it and it's just amazing I'm so glad I read it um, if you're in the US like I am I would highly recommend you uh, order it from book depository if you can because I want everybody to read it immediately, if not sooner, and it's fabulous, and I don't want you to have to wait until April. So, Women Talking, highly recommend, five-star read. And then, of course, Nonfiction November has begun, um, and I have uh, finished two nonfiction books since it started. I finished my audiobook, uh, uh, Furiously Happy. Um, by Jenny Lawson that is a, a memoir sort of a memoir um, a discussion of Lawson's um, coming to grips with and coping with her mental illnesses and it also is interspersed with some very sort of comedic sections she is a very funny person she has a blog and she writes with about mental illness with humor and also in this second book of hers with a lot of heart and soul put into it i really enjoyed furiously happy i liked it much better than um her first book and i would recommend it especially on audio it's read by the author herself and i thought it was very well done also on audio i finished good and mad by rebecca traster and this is a nonfiction book all about um, women's, uh, how women's anger translate, it translates into political and social change, which of course is a very nice compliment to women talking. Um, so reading both of those nearly at the same time was a very good experience I would recommend. But Good and Mad, um, I think, if anything about the current political situation bothers you and you want to understand more about um, how how women sort of have gotten to this point and and how women reacted and are reacting um, to uh, current political climate this is an excellent excellent book it the you know the sections about the me too movement the sections um, about uh, I just lost my train of thought, but there's sections about how women gain the right to vote and how that looks um, now. There's sections about Hillary Clinton's um, candidacy for president and sort of what happened there and how that went off the rails. And um, it just talks about a lot of those kind of issues that are central to women. It talks about the Women's March and other protest movements um, and how the intersectionality of race um, sexuality and uh, uh, gender have come together and so that in this seemingly it feels like in this round of feminism whichever whichever round you want to call this um, there's a lot more attention being paid to the way that white women especially have pushed off um, the, the uh, perspectives and the needs and the uh, 
the um, prejudices that are still in place against women of color. Um, so I thought that was very excellent. I really uh, enjoyed listening to that book. As I've said, um, I've lis I listened to that in the car and I, I use that opportunity to um, vent my own frustrations out loud while I was driving listening to that book and I found it a very cathartic, <laughs> cathartic experience. Um, and then one other thing that I want to talk about that I finished is a fiction and this was uh, The Lady Who Liked Clean Restrooms by J.P. Don Levy. This I read um, a buddy read with Sean from Sean the Book Maniac over the last two days, Friday and Saturday. Um, and we both disliked this book. This was a one star read. Um, this book was, this is a man, J.P. Dunlevy is a male author. And he um, is writing out some particular male fantasies in this book. And this could have been really good. It's all about a woman who comes from a wealthy, she has a wealthy man, she's wealthy and in a marriage. Her marriage falls apart, her husband leaves her. It's how she handles that. She loses everything. She loses all of her, you know, her nice house, her money, and all that sort of thing, her comfortable um, living arrangements and how she deals with that. And it's sort of a satire. It's supposed to be funny. I did not, I mean, there was a couple of moments that I thought were funny, but mostly I just, was irritated by it. I thought the way that it was written was really irritating. Um, it's almost, it's like sentence fragments and stream of consciousness almost. And there's certain words, random obscure words that are just repeated over and over again. And it just did not work for me. I do not recommend this book. Um, I don't think Sean would either, but we read it for novellas in November. Um, so, take that for what it's worth. And now I'm continuing to read uh, nonfiction uh, and I'm loving it. I'm in the middle of um, four nonfiction books right now because I wanted to read so many of the things on my TBR all at the same time. So I just did. So I'm reading Small Wonder on audio by Bob Barbara Kingsolver, which is a collection of essays about the natural world and sort of um, environmental issues really enjoying that it's absolutely beautiful um, and it's read by the author so that's fun um, I'm reading Devil's Highway I'm on page um, 85 on this one and this is all about 26 um, illegal immigrants who walk from Mexico into the United States get lost in the desert um, some of half of them die only 14 survive and the authors sort of piecing their stories all together um, from the the people who are walking trying to um, come into America for a better life to the coyotes or guides who are bringing them into this country to the border patrol agents who job it is to capture these people and send them back home um, it is very it's written in an interesting style, very um, staccato almost, um, but very interesting and engaging and I'm very much enjoying that. I'm dipping into and out of Shakespeare Wrote for Money by Nick Hornby, which is a collection of his columns from Believer Magazine all about what he's been reading and how that reflects on his, his life and broader um, things in the culture. Very funny and and sort of just comforting to read about books. And then I have also started um, the biography of Ulysses Grant by Ron Chernow. And you would not think that a biography that's this thick could be such a great story, but Chernow is a wonderful writer and he really brings these historical people to life um, and writes about their life with detail but not in a boring sort of fact after fact after fact way. He really writes it like a story and it's very engaging and I'm very much enjoying it so far. So that's everything that I've been reading um, and one book that I just had to 
talk to you more in depth about because I loved it so much and a big thank you for helping me to reach um, 1,000 subscribers. I hope that you are all doing well and finding lots of great books to read and I will talk to you later.